started with the fear running high about a nuclear attack by the Soviet Union in 1983. The United States government decided to initiate a strategic defense program, which could aid in intercepting and destroying strategic ballistic missiles before they reach our soil. Now, nearly four decades after working to make that possible, is it really possible for America to intercept nuclear missiles effectively? And if they could, how many? Hey folks, welcome back once again, and you are watching Daily Knowledge. What are you guys waiting for? Like, share, and subscribe. You guys might be wondering, why are we discussing this situation now? Well, there is a need. Now with Russian President Vladimir Putin placing his vast nuclear arsenal on high alert following his invasion of Ukraine, Americans should be wondering what kind of missile defense shield all our money and effort has produced. Yes, it's the $400 billion we're talking about, which the US military spent over four decades. The answer to this question might not be very pleasing. The answer is that it's not a very effective one. Since schemes to create systems capable of intercepting both incoming nuclear and conventional warheads were initially begun in the 1950s, the United States has spent more than $400 billion on different missile defense systems. Despite all these decades of study, development, and testing, no reliable anti-missile system exists to stop these intercontinental ballistic missiles (ICBMs). Short-range missile defense systems, such as the Patriot and THAAD missile defense projects, have performed well in tests, but their value is restricted to smaller, regional coverage areas. Indeed, their system designed to intercept ICBMs, known as the Ground-Based Mid-Course Defense or GMD program, has failed 8 out of its 19 tests. This failed test record is worsened by the test's heavily scheduled conditions. Is that to say all of the money was spent on a waste? To know that, let's see what exactly was supposed to work out. There will be some dull technical aspects, so beware. So what was supposed to happen was that interceptors are basically missiles that are made to counterfire at these nukes before they touch the ground. Interceptors aim to destroy an incoming ICBM, which are the nukes, traveling at around 15,000 miles per hour, or nearly 20 times the speed of sound, by flying into its path and launching a kill vehicle to impact with the warhead. When the Missile Defense Agency MDA, tests GMD, it assumes ideal weather and illumination circumstances, and because it's a test, it has access to timing and other information that no opponent would supply. That was basically nonsense. Nonetheless, the testing track record seemed to be no better than a coin flip. Aside from that, GMD is quite pricey. The Government Accountability Office (GAO) estimates that the program's final cost will be around $53 billion, with the cost virtually definitely increasing every year. Despite the high cost and poor track record, some politicians seek to extend GMD Missile defense begins here. before even demonstrating its effectiveness. At a total cost of roughly $70 billion, which is previously said is expected to rise, in a real-world scenario, the system cannot be relied on to protect the United States from even the most minor of attacks. In the case of a nuclear assault on the country, deploying a malfunctioning technology to foil the strike makes little impact, if any. The United States has only a limited capability for destroying an oncoming nuclear intercontinental ballistic missile. To safeguard the US from a strike, even from North Korea, which has an estimated 20 nuclear warheads and relatively primitive missiles, existing capabilities are inadequate and will likely remain low for the next 15 years. On the other hand, the Pentagon claims that the most recent testing proves that the system can withstand a North Korean strike. But as we were saying before, that's not the case with Russia. The capacity to fight against a Russian strike, which is reported to have almost 6,000 nuclear weapons and very advanced missile technology, is virtually non-existent. The US system is unable to deal with a huge number of incoming missiles, which is precisely the type of strike that Russia would conduct. Such an unexpected strike could wipe out half of the country. With the current scenario, the concept of an impenetrable shield against the massive arsenal of Russian missiles is essentially a pipe dream. It's so tough to believe that the US has purposefully avoided even attempting it. Official Pentagon protocol claims that the system is exclusively intended to protect the country against nuclear missiles launched by rogue governments such as North Korea. As a deterrence against a military powerhouse like Russia, 
the United States relies on its own huge nuclear arsenal of around 5,400 warheads. It's a doctrine known to people who grew up during the Cold War as mutually assured destruction, which states that any nuclear assault on the United States will be met by a counterattack that will obliterate both nations. It's not just about two countries at war, but also the countries around them. All these nukes have the potential to produce nuclear winds that may sweep over the world, posing an enormous hazard to both people and economies. The urgency is real since Putin has not acted rationally in his war in Ukraine, particularly in remarks such as the one he made upon initiating the invasion. He warned that anybody who attempts to meddle with them, or even worse, create dangers for their nation and people, must understand that Russia's response would be prompt, leading to repercussions that others have never faced in their history. Aside from that, he started a few days later that Russia's nuclear forces had been placed in heightened battle readiness. That's definitely some serious move from Putin's side. Okay, let's end this chat about tragic loss. Let's assume they constructed a workable model. Finally, even a functional missile defense system would be problematic since it decreases the emphasis on diplomatic dispute resolution while well, enemies may simply construct additional missiles to destroy missile defense systems for significantly less than the defense systems themselves. According to Philip Coyle, who was the former Assistant Secretary of Defense and Chief Weapons Evaluator for the Defense Ministry, he asserts that all of these missile defense systems may be overloaded. All missile defense systems have weaknesses that the adversary can take advantage of. By definition, the defense can only expect to avoid being overwhelmed if the attack is restricted. Basically, an offense-defense arms race is a hazardous, unstable loop in which the offense always wins. But we can't risk based on such a philosophy. The US currently has 44 interceptor missiles, which are stationed in silos in Alaska and California to protect the United States against a small-scale intercontinental ballistic missile assault, most likely from North Korea. According to CAPE, the majority of the money spent on NGI totaling $13.1 billion, would go into research and development, including the manufacturing of 10 test missiles that would be launched in the mid-2020s. Then, beginning in 2028, $2.3 billion would be spent on procuring and deploying 21 interceptors, bringing the GMD force to 65 missiles. The operating expenses for these missiles would thus be $2.2 billion throughout their service lifetimes. Okay, let's move away from all that. Anyway, coming to the end of today's episode. America requires significant protection against the horrors of a nuclear strike. Meanwhile, its skeptics argue that it provides no protection that cannot be defeated at a lower cost and that its presence merely serves to encourage the development of more powerful nuclear weapons. Do mention your views in the comments section below. That's about it for today. Make sure to subscribe to our channel for more content just like this one. And while you're at it, turn on post notifications so that you never miss out on any of our future uploads. Drop a like for the video if you loved today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll meet again in the next one.